my name is Kylie Eamon, and I am the creator of the Outlaws of Brown Park for the John Jarvie Historical Ranch curriculum. Um, before we get started, we're going to go over the intended learning outcome, which is located here in each of the lesson plans. In this lesson plan, students will define, recognize, and analyze primary, secondary, and folkloric documents and be able to differentiate between those three. Um, da -da -da. Um, here is the background for student, for teachers. This is not intended for you to go through with your students bit by bit. You can share this knowledge if you would like, but this is more so that you are going to be able to answer your students' questions as they arise, and also to give you a little bit more context about what it is of this area that you will be teaching, that you'll be sending this lesson around. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I'm not asking your students to know everything about Josie and Ann Bassett or Isom Dart or Butch Cassidy. We are asking that your students really just kind of learn throughout this curriculum to differentiate between primary, secondary, and folklore documents. And this is just the framework we're using to do that. Um, here is the key vocabulary. As you can see, we're centering it back on the broader themes and not these individual things. Um, students tend to get really interested in outlaws, so you are more than welcome to go through and teach it, but that is not the central part of this lesson. Um, the first activity of this lesson plan is, plan is to define and identify sources. On the whiteboard, you're going to want to write primary source, secondary source, folklore, and write down a definition. You can come up with a definition on your own with the help of your class, or you can use the one that I provided right here. And you're going to want to ask students to give you examples as you go through each of these sources. So when you get to a primary source, if they say a photograph, that's correct. If they say something like a history textbook, you can just gently correct them that that's actually a secondary source and make sure you're giving reasons why each one is the kind of source that it is. Um, do that for primary, secondary, and folkloric sources. At the end, you are going to want to go, after you finish that portion, you want to really solidify that part of the lesson and you're going to hand them out this worksheet for students to identify um, which of these sources that they're reading is a primary, secondary, or a folkloric source. Um, here's the answer sheet. We also have, if your students uh, prefer to use their hands instead of write things down, we have these squares that you can cut out and ask your students to work together in group to sort them into primary, secondary, or folkloric documents. It is up to you which one your students would prefer. Um, the next part of this thing you are going of this lesson plan, you are going to be making what is a very very fun star kind of booklet together. So it'll hang kind of like this. And in this booklet, your students are going to be working to create um, answer what is an outlaw based on their prime uh, previous knowledge from folkloric sources, primary, secondary, and uh, documents, and then comparing and contrast what they thought they knew based on folklore, based on what they learned from primary and secondary sources. Um, to start, you're going to want to give your students four pieces of blank paper. Origami paper works great because it's already square, but you can also cut out normal printer paper into squares using a paper cutter or scissors, whichever works for you. Um, on the first paper, you're going to want your students to write down what they think an outlaw is. So they can either draw or write an answer. And I also want you to encourage your students to write down what sources they're getting this information from. So are they getting it from cartoons? Are they getting it from um, things they think they know about the history of the state they live in? Things like that that'll really push them to think about where they're getting their information from and not just taking what they know as natural or given. You really want them to question their sources. Then the next piece of paper after you, everyone is finished writing down, you want them to get together in groups or pairs or on their own if they can't, but I would encourage group work in this project. It'll make it reading through the primary sources just a little bit faster. Um, we have 10 primary sources for you to hand out. They are articles from local newspapers, their photographs from state history's archives, um, just a lot of really interesting things for students to work through so they can really learn um, what get familiar with using primary sources. Um, if you would like to add more primary sources, you can go find some, but these are just some that we have ready made for you. Um, students will make an observation about, uh, at least one observation per 
source that they have. This is why it's best to go in groups so you can all do this really quickly. Um, ask your students to discuss with their groups or their partners about these primary sources. And once you are all done that, you want them to answer the question, based on your primary sources, what was life like for an outlaw in Browns Park? This should be probably modified a little bit from what they previously knew, but it also might, and you really want them while they're um, writing down to cite their sources. It does not have to be in MLA, APA, or Chicago format. You can just have them write down, I got it from this picture, I got it from this source. You're trying to, again, not really emphasize, um, unless you're teaching with junior high or middle school or high school students, it doesn't matter because you want to just get students in the habit of citing their work and looking for those citations while they're looking through sources in the future. This is just part of that general liter uh, media literacy that you want kids to be working on throughout this project. Um, the next part of this is our secondary sources. Again, we have 10 secondary source materials that you can go through and hand out to your students. Have them get in the same group, different groups. It doesn't matter. You just want them to be looking at these sources together and really just analyzing what's different about these compared to those initial primary sources that they were looking through and if anything is radically different that they can see. Um, again, at the end, you're going to want them to write down or draw. Again, it's whatever works best for your students. Um, based on what they know from secondary sources, what was life like for an outlaw in Browns Park? Again, you want them to at least be citing their work in some way at the bottom of their paper just to get them in that habit. Again, if you also if you're teaching older students, we have suggestions throughout this to um, get students to for you to age up this curriculum to junior high or middle school. It is intended for fourth and fifth graders, but you can use it to change to adjust to your students' ready knowledge. Um, the next part, this is our last portion, you are going to want to compare and contrast the, your students' original ideas of outlaws to their final idea after reading these sources. So on one side of the paper, they're going to either draw or write down what they thought an outlaw was at the beginning. And on the other side, you want them to start asking what is an outlaw that they know now that they have read these primary sources. If your students are, you also again want to ask your students to cite what they are using. You don't want them to get in the habit of just um, writing down information without citing back where it came from. Um, at the end of this activity, you are going to want to compile the booklet together. So this will happen for each of the four pieces of paper. You're going to want to fold them hot dog and hamburger style with the pretty part of the paper, so the nice picture or whatever word they drew on the inside of the fold. So you're going to, and you're also going to want to throw the fold it diagonal. So you'll have one, two, three folds throughout this. You're going to want to take this corner and bring it to this corner so it looks like this. And then you'll end up with this. It's kind of like a frog fold in origami. And while this step, this can be a little bit confusing for students, if you ever taught a child how to fold a crane or a flower, you know that they pick up on origami really fast and this will not take as long once they get the handle of that first fold. Um, after you folded all four of the pages, you're going to want to glue them together and stick them so they kind of fold up. That All the folds should be facing the same way. And you are also going to want to take two pieces of construction paper or more firm paper and lie them flat, stick a ribbon underneath them, and then you're going to want to glue your book to the inside of your covers. So at the end, it'll look like this, or I would actually recommend folding it along that diagonal. And when your book is dry and you finish it, you can fold it and it'll pop out like this and your students will have a really fun, creative way to compile their work um, on all their sources that they learned while they were doing, learning to compare and contrast primary, secondary, and folkloric sources. Um, I would recommend while they're drying, you have a quick debrief of the project and ask your students just questions about it. So I have some questions here, questions about what sources they use, um, 
do they use primary secondary sources in their lives without doing research just things like that to really get them in the habit of recognizing that they do use primary sources they watch the news they listen to their parents watch the news um, they talk to their friends these are all primary sources and secondary sources as well so you really want them to get into the habit of going through those at the end, we also have a lesson assessment, so you can ask your students to get in the big chair and so that you and your class can work through what worked in this lesson plan, what didn't, so that you can modify it in the future and really see what your students got out of the lesson plan. We also have a Jarvie Ranch extension. Um, the first activity of this is you want to make sure that they, are, they understand what a primary, secondary, and folklore source, so it would be this portion of the um, lesson plan. And you can also go through that worksheet where they identify what's what or as before you go. Um, during the visit to John Jarvie Historic Ranch, it is a bit of a drive. It is in Daggett County, so you might want to put you so it might not be possible for you to visit. Um, but you can go to other historical landmarks nearby and work on identifying what are primary and what are secondary sources when you are at a historical site. So a primary source while you're at a historical site would be an artifact the landscape itself, a building, things like that that were there when the place was founded. Um, for a secondary source, it would things be like a museum volunteer or a guide or a sign or something like that that wasn't there when the place was founded. Um, after it, you can work through to build that booklet that you worked through earlier that we just walked through. Dun, dun, dun. All right, and then next, dun, 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 dun. We go through all of our awesome primary sources and at the end we have a list of other resources which are podcasts, videos, and um, YouTube series. The Utah Digital Newspaper Archive is a free archive of newspapers from Utah's history. It's free and you can share it with your students.